Firstly, Guy Havard from Sky Sports, please. Um, the only concern is uh, Callum O'Dowd, who just has a um, just a bit of a dead leg. Um, so we'll see we'll see how he does over the next uh, 36 hours. We'll see how he is. Well, I think first and foremost, uh, I'm sympathetic towards the players themselves, because it's quite traumatic for the player to get coronavirus in, you know, in, in a situation like that, and the effect on their families. So, first of all, I think that's lost sometimes. You know, I think that's first of all, we must have a degree of sympathy for the players themselves. They put themselves out there, they sacrifice themselves, and uh, you know, I think it's um, that's. My sympathy would be to the player first of all. Secondly, yeah, it isn't ideal for clubs. I, I, you know, we must uh, acknowledge that that it's not ideal at all, um, and it's not ideal for uh, international teams either. So certainly, it, we all have to live with this situation at the moment, and um, um, you know, so that's that's how that's how I see it. Well, I think in the last month, we weren't hit with a lot of infections. We were hit with um, close contacts, you know, because maybe we adhered to the policies a lot stricter, maybe than, you know, than anyone else, because we had that two metre rule. Uh, we're sort of following, you know, the HSE guidelines, you know, so we did. So we, we didn't have any more than anyone else, I would say, but we had eight, eight ruled out because two, two with it and six with close contacts. In the in the last camp, and in, obviously in this camp, we've had four ruled out of, of it. Um, but that's, you know, it's 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 um, it's difficult to manage, and that's you know I think that, you know, a lot of protocols have been followed and to a high standard, um, but just sometimes, you know, the virus doesn't discriminate. Listen, Troy Troy is a brilliant young player that we we have you know that we I've had in the under twenty one squad scored some terrific goals. I think um, you know he certainly wasn't part of our plans for the senior international team now where he is at the moment. I think um, you know initially just coming back coming into the under twenty one team, uh, speaking to Jim Crawford, the under twenty one manager and all the staff that. The GPS results in training last week were of very high standard, you know. I think, you know, he's training really well and he was very, very fit in the training week they had. Played 45 minutes and did very well. And obviously because we've had sort of a lot of withdrawals because of, of what we've spoken about, um, he comes into the squad and, uh, you know, but he won't, he won't start or anything like that. Thank you. Tony, I've done a few RT, please. Well, I think, you know, I'd, I, you know, to be fair, the protocols are quite stringent. And I think, as I said earlier, Tony, we, we um, in the last camp, we didn't have many. We had two. Uh, but obviously, four to six were roll, ruled out as clo close contacts. So that was, um, that, that was a reality, you know. So we were very, very strict in our adherence to the HSE guidelines. Uh, in a way, in the two metre rule, in the way that other countries don't have to because they had a one metre rule or a 1.5 metre rule. So I think, um, so we were really punished, or where we, the situation was obviously on the flights. So we tried to change, that's why we, we, we had two options really. People say, oh, we could have taken this friendly or that friendly. But we couldn't. 
with two options. The agreement was in place to play uh, Slovakia in the playoff. Northern Ireland were to play Bosnia, and the, whoever didn't win played each other. So that was the agreement. Then, obviously, the option came up to play England when their friendly was cancelled or travel to Bosnia. We took the game against England for for mainly one of the main reasons we took it was for safety reasons, in that we wanted to minimise the risks, meet in England, travel to Cardiff and play in England, play in, in, in Wales and come to Dublin, minimise the travel time, cut out the close contacts on the plane, minimise all of that. That was a strong part of the reason we played the game. And I think um, the, uh, so we were offered the alternative was Bosnia away, England away. We decided on England away. I think, um, but nevertheless, um, we can't, you know, it's very, very difficult to contain. And if a player comes in with it and, and you know, it can, it can happen. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. And Alan Kelly's situation. Um, it seems odd that he, he was with the team for, for the two matches. Did he just feel that by coming to Dublin that his own safety might be at risk? Yeah, listen, Alan. Alan, uh, as you know, has been a great servant of Irish football, and uh, he's a, you know terrific goalkeeper coach. He has concerns, and which which he articulated, and I've no, I've no issue with that at all. That's that's uh, you know I respect that. Well, I think we've got it. It's a challenge for us tomorrow. I think we've got obviously, um, you know, we're missing a high number of players. I think that's a, it's a challenge for us. But it's nevertheless, we, we must prepare well and make sure we're ready. And it's, it's an international, it's an important game in Group B, and it's opportunity for for, for some players who, who uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for several players. And I think, I think one of the things that that it increases. One of the things that we've come in for a bit of criticism. That's fair enough. You know, that's yeah, that's part of the territory when you don't win games. I accept that. Um, I think, but one of the things that we've seen is that we have a bit of depth in both matches against Wales. Even though we're missing a high number of players, and Wales have a good front three and Gareth Bra Gareth Bale, Daniel James, and 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 and, and Brooks. Not to mention Ramsey in 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 the game in Dublin. And yet we've matched them for 90 minutes in both games. And I think uh, with, with a lot of players missing. And I think certainly, uh, um, you know, they've been a good template. Wales have been interesting because they've blooded a lot of young players probably three or four years ago. They've blooded a lot of young players three or four years ago. Now their players are in their early 20s or early, t you know, 20s. And, and uh, you know, and I think we've, we've blooded a lot of players in the last couple of months probably more than more than any time in recent history um and uh, you know a lot a lot of players are getting vital experience um and you know it's a great opportunity for some players today and i think hopefully are against bulgaria and hopefully they can take it will dalton pledge your media please No, no, I think, listen, we're focused on, obviously tomorrow's game is very important, and then we, we focus on the World Cup qualifiers in March, and I think by then we'll have a back four, back of you know, players available in the back four, Seamus Coleman, Matt Doherty, John Egan, Enda Stevens. we'll have, you know, players like James McCarthy and Harry Arthur available, attacking players like Aaron Connolly and, and uh, Callum Robinson, and other players that, that's just off the top of my head, I'm sure there's other players I've left out, I think the um, so we will have a lot of players um, available in in March, and these players that are getting their opportunity will supplement that, and and create competition for places, and create an environment where we we're led to believe there could be three qualifiers in March in the in the World Cup series, and if that is the case, you need a squad, and I think uh, we're, we're you know we're at, we're building a squad of players that will be available for the World Cup qualifiers in March.
Well, we haven't picked a squad, uh, or haven't picked a team yet. Um, and James, you know, has scored some goals for Luton this year, and he was obviously very important in them getting promoted from League One to the Championship and in keeping them up last season. And um, he's a different type of striker than what we have. OK, we've got one more minute in the uh, live section, so we'll bounce to Damien Spalman for that, please. Uh, <laughs> um, I think I don't. I don't think anyone has. But listen, you know, there's nothing we can do about that. We can only manage uh, the situation. And I think, uh, um, like, I think the players' application has been exceptional. Um, and I think we've just got to galvanise ourselves for this one last game now against Bulgaria. Um, Bulgaria. Uh, Missed a penalty to draw two all in Finland. They played quite well against Finland. They got they got two penalties in the game. They scored one and missed one, and um, so they played quite well. So um, obviously they lost in the ninetieth minute to Wales uh, as well. So they they've they've improved a lot and they're well drilled and and they've been more expansive in recent matches than they were previously. So it's a t you know it's a tough game. So you know a lot of players coming into the team. So we'll have to step up and, and have a good home performance and try and get that win that we need. OK, we're into the embargo section now. Everything from now on is embargoed to 11pm tonight. So the first question in that section will be from Gavin Cooney, please. Hi, Stephen. Can you just briefly on Alan Kelly? I think everyone was under a special reason for not wanting to travel to Dublin. But I am interested in the timing of it. Why is Alan not dead at this point, having been part of the squad over the last three months? Um, I think it coincided with probably uh, the negative tests of, or the positive tests of Matt Doherty and, and James McLean. So probably that was probably an influence, I think. Like, do you worry that he lacks confidence in the protocol? No, no, not at all. I think there's too much been made of that. I think he put it, he just spoke because he was given an honest, an honest reason. That you know, and I think uh, you know, I think it's to, to try and look for something else is not, is not, you know, is not is not right. You know, I think it's he just spoke and gave an honest reason. Okay, Ed Leahy, RTE, please. Yeah, I would be Ed. You know, I have to be honest. I would be. So, that's that's important that that doesn't happen for us. You know, I think uh, we have to go and put in a performance. Everyone has to dig in. Obviously, uh, a lot of young players coming in, and you know, we've got to, and some other players coming back into the team. So we've got to we've got to dig in and, and uh, try and be resolute and make sure we don't get we get a result. Not really. I mean, that wasn't a factor at all in, in having players from a club. I think, um, obviously, central midfield, um, we've lost players in that area. And um, Aaron McIniff has had, a, obviously, a very good season. Shamrock Rovers and before that, very good two seasons. And before that, look, when he come, come home from Tottenham, obviously, he showed up very well at Derry City. And um, it's had a very good, very consistent season with Shamrock Rovers. I think... Uh, Graham Bork, just his versatility along, you know, and, and you know, certainly uh, has the ability to make an impact. Um, um, to be honest, I would have called up Michael Duffy from Dundalk as well, except there's an issue with his paperwork in FIFA, and uh, he, he, he would have been called up as well. Um, but uh, his paperwork to some kind of issue with, with his transfer. So, um, that, so that, that hasn't happened. Yeah, 
<laughs> um, I think that that's you know subjective, isn't it? I think uh, you know I don't think it is uh, at all. To be honest, I don't think it's, you can make any realistic assessment based on. I think our performance against Slovakia showed what we want to do, how we want to play. That was very clear. The the how how uh, you know the potential that exists. You know, and then the next two games were down nearly 10 players in, in the games, in the next couple of games, and we're, 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 we're fighting a situation where we have to dig out, you know, the morning of the, after Slovakia getting back, you know, we've got corona, uh, you know, uh, COVID um, positive and we've got close contacts and five are ruled out and you've got to put in a performance, you've got to get on the bus at half 11 and play at two o'clock. So I think that's, that's been the nature of it and I, I, you can't make any real assessment of it overall. But I do think, uh, um, but I, I'm encouraged by some of the performances of some of the players. And, some, you know, I think, you know, some players have put themselves into, really into contention. So when the World Cup qualifiers come around, we're not, we're not just putting players in for their debut. That they've, we, 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 they've had a taste of it. They know what it's about. And we know who's ready and who, we'll know who, who's ready and who needs more time. You know, and that's, these are important important things to learn you know when you're building a squad that wants to achieve things and I think these are important uh, important lessons to learn OK we've only got four minutes left at the moment so could we just tease it to one question each um, for now so could we go to Craig Pope please Well, these these are unknowables. You cannot be certain to say that. You know, you you know, you know that's you can't say with with that. You can't say that with any degree of certainty. You know, I think uh, we're all still learning about the virus, and you know, so I think that's, you know, we'll have to uh, let the medical doctors decide on that. Paul Lennon, please. Yeah, um, the first question is, you know, I think there was a lot of meetings and a lot of, you know, around the protocols for, for the camp and there was a lot of protocols put in place. And, um, you know, I think it's a very, very difficult thing to, to, to manage, I think, um, you know, and really it was, it was such a relief for me this morning to get up at eight o'clock and and realised that you know that we had po we know positives. You know that was that was a real concern going into this morning that that we would have positives because because we've Matt Darty and James McLean. Um, you know. Um, positive y yesterday, you know, and I think that was that was the concern because we did an extra test, like we've done extra tests, we've done more testing than anybody, you know. We did that extra test just to make sure that we got on the flight. That wasn't the one we did. That James and Matt was um, were positive for. They they were they were negative for the match tests, you know, but they were positive for the one that we just making sure we get on the flight okay. So I think that was that was an, an independent test, and I think uh, um, so. We're just delighted that everyone is negative this morning, and that's a big boost for everyone. In relation to uh, should we play four four two, um, you know that's that's. Um, or an extra striker, as you say, possibly three five two if if need be. Um, yeah, no, you know, I think um, every game is different, and you can't rule it out. In at times, you know, I say I, I say for certain, and you know, we, we do want to um, create a or convert more chances. That's for sure. There's no doubt about that. Okay, we've only got time for one more question. Uh, 
time for one more question, so let's pull ahead, please. Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, we certainly want to win tomorrow. You know, we w you know it would be terrific if we could get a victory, and um, and bring that into the World Cup campaign. Um, so that's that's what we're trying to do. I think. Uh, um, so yeah, it, it's. Uh, I don't know really what I can add to that, but yeah, I think that's that's our objective. Um, you know, we're disappointed that we haven't haven't won a course. We're not, uh, you know, I'm not trying to suggest otherwise. So, uh, you know, we'd be very, very determined to uh, put in a strong performance tomorrow night. Okay, guys, we're going to have to end it there.